Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers and this is our kitchen. This is not a set. That's right. And we're making lunch. And we're starving. <laughs> Most of the time we make the last meal of the day and occasionally we make breakfast. But you know what? Here's what happened the other day. Kelly is training for a half marathon. That's right. And she's also doing other stuff. So I said, Kelly, explain to me what your workout is. And so it didn't sound that bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, what if Nikki and I joined you for a workout? That's right, we could do that. What happened a day later? I can't hardly walk, but I'm so, in shape. That's so right. <laughs> we're in better shape than we were. That's right. Or we realized how bad a shape right. we were in. But I do feel like I have been under the guidance of a drill instructor at Paris Island. Okay. Very familiar feeling. That's, That's right. Kelly. She's pretty evil. So back in 1983, <laughs> I had the same sort of feeling in my hips, my knees, yeah. my stomach. Yeah. She did it. She mm -hmm. almost made us throw up. So what can we do meal-wise to make us feel better before today's workout? I know. Carbs. That's right. Carbs are good. Some carbs. carbs are good. We're not going overboard with carbs, but we're going to do some carbs. There's a few things we have to do to get this whole thing started. I'm going to rehydrate these beautiful sun-dried tomatoes here yeah. that we got from our CSA package. I'm going to put some olive oil and some red wine. And you know what? Just for taste, if you like this sort of thing, you could put in a shot of ouzo. There you go. Maybe you should. Because this is a Greek recipe. That's right. If you like that flavor, you don't have to do that, but that's that's a very licorice flavor. It's right. an anise flavor. I'm going to take some Greek seasoning. Now, if you look up Greek seasoning, if you look up at your store, if you bought Greek seasoning, what you're going to see is rosemary, basil, oregano, garlic, onion powder, and lemon solids is what mm -hmm. they're going to say. But you could do the same thing yourself. Put a little lemon zest because that gives you that nice, wonderful flavor. Today, we're celebrating um, Greek Day. That's right, Greek Day. Because you have Greek heritage. And I love Greek And Greek. I want to make you something that's really good. Thank you. Not too long ago, we were visited by someone who had a casserole. Mm -hmm and they did something with zucchini. We looked in our refrigerator. What do we have? We've got lots and lots of zucchini. We have cheese left over from the kids. That's right. I thought we're gonna do something that you will really like. I'm excited, because I'm hungry. And I ask you to make a simple bread. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a Greek street, street bread. bread. Right. There's nothing to it. There's a little bit of kneading, right. a little bit of, it's kind of a kneady. Yes. Recipe. I remember my grandmother saying this was in all the streets, just for dippings, whatever you need. They always to said dip, street bread. To dip in your stuff, to right. cut it. It's delicious. So I'm going to, again, rehydrate my tomatoes here. Okay, let's let that set a little while. Another thing we have to do is get the bread started. So yes, what do. do you have to do? This is a simple recipe. It is really simple. Not too many ingredients. There's not a whole lot in it. And what we're going to do first, I have in this first bowl, I have a teaspoon of sugar gotcha. and a package of yeast. And then I've got warm water here. I have half a cup of warm water. And we're going to put that in, and we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes. Let it get working. Yeah, so it's going to actually grow a little bit. And then this next container over here, I have a tablespoon of salt. And I'm going to put a whole cup of water, because as we make this, we're going to put both of these in with our bread. We're going to do a Miss Helen type bread, too, where we have a take out the circle and... Okay, she's referencing Miss Helen, who made fried apple pies. Oh. Oh. So she's referencing that thing that we did several years ago. Here's just a little bit of how she folds her flour over. That is the old-fashioned way. All right, so now we just need to time this for 10 minutes. All right, I got you covered. All right. Now, here's what we got going on. We've got all this zucchini, it's that time of year. Yes. Zucchini, 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 all year long. Right. So how do you make good use of zucchini? The seeds are not that big. Mm -mm. So you take a look at the seeds here. We don't waste anything here. We don't yes. peel, we put them on our mandolin, and we just slice them. So we're gonna get every bit of use out of these. So what happens when you slice on our mandolin? You can need to get you one of these if you don't have one. Mighty this is handy. Nice. I'm gonna be careful because I'm getting down to nothing here. What happens when you slice them? Comes out the bottom. Nice, beautiful slices. Kind of pretty too of with the zucchini. green. Yeah, I like that. Now, and we also have some yellow summer squash. Same thing, use the seeds, everything, zero waste. What do you get? You get a nice slice of squash. What a great way to use this. What a great way so to use much it. right now. This Absolutely. time of year, there's so Absolutely. much. So let's do a few more of those. Okay. We've washed these. And again, zero waste. Now, when I grew up years ago, and I would talk to the old timers, a lot of these folks had gone through the depression. Yeah. Nothing went to waste. Nothing went to waste. And you know, I kind of like that philosophy. My dad, when he makes his turkey hash, mm -hmm. he picks every bone clean. Yeah, it does. So 
we have got quite a bit of stuff here for our recipe. Yes, we do. What I'm gonna start with, gyro meat. Now that's beef and lamb and spices. So where do you get gyro meat? There's a lot of places you get gyro meat. Just look online, figure out which stores are around you, and I bet you you'll find some. It smells like we're at the fair or something. It does. Like it's, a good oh, Greek restaurant. Good Greek restaurant. We've never done this recipe before, mm -mm. but sometimes you know. Yeah. Because we put our vegetables in the oven with olive oil. Right. And we'll just put salt and pepper on, we'll eat them just like that. We know ahead of time what this is going to taste like oh, and smell yeah. like. So we have taken everything in our kitchen that we had available. We had some frozen gyro meat. Well, the grandkids, we don't encourage anybody to play with their food, but <laughs> the very uh, nature of this cheese, I guess you call it string cheese. I like to pull it apart and play oh, with it. Oh, yeah. We're going to incorporate some mozzarella or uh, mozzarella, as, as Taryn used to say. <laughs> mozzarella. She used to say mozzarella in her recipes. You know, when we work out, now that we're in our 30s. Yeah, yeah. You know, we gotta, we gotta have some fuel. Uh huh. Exactly. Oh, I wish you could smell this kitchen. Oh my! I know you're loving this. I'm because excited. Because that's one of your favorite things in the world. This is almost overwhelmingly lovely smell. Yes, it is. Coming hey, from this. Do you see my yeast too? Oh, it's growing. Yes, it's growing. It's nice. working. Yes. So you've got oh, another got? three and a half minutes okay. on that. And look at this. Wow. Look I at this. That. <laughs> so, the recipe that we saw was from a friend who was trying to utilize their. Zucchini that I think they said they saw it on TV or in a magazine or something yeah. and it was good But it was uh, how can we say it no meat? Yeah, just fetch no just, carbs. Yeah, and it was good, special. but yeah. I want to add a little flavor to it And I want to take it a, a step deeper And to be honest, we don't watch too much cooking shows I've never understood the concept of Competition when you're cooking. Yeah I mean, it's enough trouble just to get everything just right and have it, it just like you want it. Then to be timed. Then no to way. be timed yeah. and struggle. Stress out. It's, it's like fishing. <laughs> and I don't have any animosity towards those who enjoy a fishing tournament. But man, I love to fish and I'm intense looking at the water and wondering what's going to come out. But when you turn it into a competition, just don't get it. But listen, do you remember back at Mom's when we were... <laughs> with, we'd always have competition with my brother. You always beat him, even without even trying. But it was, that competition was his idea. It was relaxing, though. He had two to three hours. And what did he do, Nikki? When, he tried to cheat. What did he do? He put rocks in his fish and bucket. And lead. Yes. And diver's lead. And he had to have it On the way in. But you would always catch one huge bass that would just end the, end the tournament. He is, bless <laughs> his heart, he's so competitive. And he it's is. such a struggle to beat him every year. And it know is. that he just doesn't have the yes. skills. But that's a family fun competition, isn't it? No, oh, he's gonna. We're lighting him up on TV. I love it. Here's that's your brother. Bless his heart. Never won a fishing tournament in his life. Well, that's you guys fishing too. I've never wanted to do a fishing tournament. We went to St. Clair. I yeah. thought, man, we're just gonna have fun. And he brought out the whiteboard. Yes, he did. Who won? Ta-da! Didn't want to win. That's Didn't right. want it to be a competition. But Willie. That's right. Okay. Now you can see that several things have taken place here. Mm -hmm. Our tomatoes are hydrating. Yes, they are. Your yeast is rising that. rapidly. And I'll be just frying this up while you're doing that. I'm just gonna pour this right in the middle. I'm gonna start stirring it in. I'm also gonna add, this is my salt water. I have a cup. Gotcha. And I'm gonna add this, and I'm probably gonna need a little bit more, usually towards the end. I'm gonna almost have to add probably another quarter to a half a cup. But let me see what this does for me. I need to get me, now I've got all this in, I'm gonna get another half, see how there's a little salt left, another half cup of warm water in here. Gotcha. All right, you remember back Nikki, in the cabin a long time ago, we made our own pita bread. Mm -hmm. We made our own meat. We did. For gyros. We did. Now here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna take our lamb and we're gonna make a kind of a loaf out of this. So let's go ahead and start with, now we went out and got a little bit of rosemary fresh and a little bit of oregano. But we're gonna go ahead and put some dry, it calls, calls for more dried stuff, but you can use some fresh too. You can chop that a little finer in the food processor, which Nikki's taken and gonna put about a half an onion in there, and a clove of garlic. Are those chopped up enough for you? Yep. So we've taken about a half of onion, a large garlic clove. Now we're gonna take uh, some breadcrumbs. Okay. Now my hands are a mess, so I'll have you add them if you don't mind. How much I'm gonna be working all this in. Uh, I'd say go ahead and put if you had to measure this out, I never measure anything, but you're probably talking five or six tablespoons in here. Now come back with an egg. 
What would you like? How much time? Uh, about 15 minutes. All right, now each one of these ingredients that I'm gonna mention, you're gonna use about a teaspoon. Okay, go ahead. All right, now we're coming back with oregano. Now we're coming back with some marjoram. Now I like a lot of flavor. And these flavors all really enhance this. We're gonna come back with some even more rosemary. Rosemary is, to me, one of the best things you can do with lamb. I'm gonna come in with some black pepper. Get any cumin in there. Give me some cumin, about like that. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in the food processor. Just give that a spin until it gets nice and worked up. Now, salt and pepper to taste. I do like a lot of salt and a lot of pepper. And I'm gonna split that in half. And I have a roast pan over here. It has got hot water in it. We're gonna take one half of this, and make a little loaf out of it, plop that right in over here. And that water will kind of help keep the moisture in. And we're gonna cook that on 325 and at least for an hour. You want the internal temperature to be about 165 until it's not pink anymore. And you're gonna have you a nice loaf. And Nikki, I will open the oven. And there's that. Oh, you'd like yeah. one of those pieces of I would. gyro meat, wouldn't you? I we gotta wait. save it for the rest I can of wait. All right, and I'm actually adding, I have another half cup of warm water here. I'm slowly adding that in as I mix this, but this has to be kneaded for like 10 minutes. That's why I picked this job. Did you? <laughs> okay. So you can see over there behind us, if you look over our shoulder, you can see one of those little loaves of bread that we did. And you know what? If you do a bread recipe and you want that bread to have extra added flavor, there is no law against putting some seasoning in that bread. I'm ready for a little if you'd like to give me some. A little seasoning. Are you ready for yes. that? Yes, go ahead All and right. throw some on here I'm as I'm in the process. This. And I'll just keep mixing it in. These, this prepared Greek seasoning, you can make your own or you can buy some in the store. There are also uh, very flavored Greek seasonings on the market out there that have very intense flavors that you can buy and add to your breads or recipes where you want it to have that Greek flavor. We kind of mix up our own. But remember, remember the lemon. Always add some oh, lemon yeah. to that. It really adds something. So to put some zest. We always keep lemons around. All right, I'm getting to work out. Are you sure I need to work out today? I think we still do. I do anyway. So that's been another 10 minutes. Right. And then what? I'm going to set this aside and we're going to let it sit for a couple hours. I'm going to drop Here, that. Let me, let me set it aside. You're set aside? Natalie loved when you set it aside. I set it aside. Set it aside again. And I'm going to cover this with a towel. All okay. right, so this is ready to sit back for two hours. And you know what? I actually have another one I prepared earlier, so we're ready to go because Kelly's going on vacation. She wants to take bread. So I'm going to put this back and let this sit and get the one that's done. That's a great thing about when you're doing a recipe. Sometimes you make a little extra. Mm-hmm. And look what happens in two hours. Oh, beautiful. So now we have another step, and I'm already a mess. We're going to knock this back down. You killed it. I killed it. And we're going to let it sit for another. This needs another half hour while you're cooking. I'm going to set this aside again. Want to set it aside? You want me to set it aside? Yeah, set it aside for me. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to take a small yellow sweet onion. All right. All right. Ready for chopping? How small you want them? A little bit smaller? Oh, that's fine. Perfect. That's absolutely fine. All right. Now we're going to take our last two pieces of gyro meat out and we're just going to go ahead and immediately Ready? we're going to leave our grease in there and we're going to immediately put our onions in there. All right. And we're going to saute those. Our friend who made this, I'm not sure how she did it, but it was a very pleasant to the eye oh, yeah. experience. Oh yeah, It smelled good. And again, hers was absolute vegetarian. We are going a step further and making it a meal. That's right. Along with your street bread. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our, look at that, almost perfect. perfect. Yeah. We'll do a yellow one. A green one, I like and that. And a zucchini, and then we'll take some of our cheese, and what we'll just do is, now that's gonna melt when it's in the oven, so just put a strip of that, strip of that. And this is our grandkids' string cheese that they use. And let's take some of our tomato okay. and put it right in the middle. And if you want to do several of those. Okay, I can do that for you. I'll keep handing you those. And we want all this material to be used to make a sort of a lasagna-ish yeah. casserole. So what do you have on your gyro? Tzatziki and- Onions. Onions. You want to grab me a couple more noodles, I'll make some more of these for yeah. you. So what a great and tasty way 
to use your squash with no waste. Absolutely no waste. We didn't peel these. These are cute. I like it. So you could add whatever you wanted, but as soon as these onions are done, and we want those to be, we want the sugars to cook out and all those flavors. When you brown sweet onions, mm -hmm. oh. And I've noticed too that if you have a problem with onions and indigestion, if you brown these and cook a lot of that sugar out and you get it nice mm -hmm. and browned up, you, I don't have that indigestion. All right. So we're almost there. I'll take a couple more noodles if you'd like. Oh, yeah. Get some Still more ready. Going? Yep, I could do more. One pan here, I fried the meat in it. We're gonna cook our casserole in it. And it's preheated for the oven. Yeah. So you think about cooking your vegetables in the oven. If you just do vegetables and you use olive oil, mm -hmm. usually we let ours go for a half hour or so at 375, 350, something like that. We're gonna do the same thing. Now really everything here you could eat. There's nothing here that is uh, you know, uncooked per se. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Okay. You have two hands. I'll be the roller. You can be the roller. We're going to start with our little process here. And here's your first one. Mm. That's pretty, isn't it? Now it took it was it was we had to shape it. It took a little work. It took a lot of work. More than three hands. To make it pretty. Thank you, Kelly. To make it pretty. So. It looks like a flower. That's quite beautiful, is it not? Yes, it is. So now, we just roll the olive oil. Yum. I like it. I'm going to hit the vegetables. We're going to give this plenty of olive oil. Yum. That is so pretty. And Kelly is dairy free. So we did one for her. Look how cute that is. So we didn't <laughs> put any cheese. And you can come back with some spices. So a little salt as you desire, a little pepper, if you want some pepper, a little Greek seasonings, and olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. And we're gonna put these in the oven at 375. We're gonna keep an eye on them, probably about 25 to 35 minutes, just see where we go here. This ought to be tasty. And we got some feta cheese Ooh. out too for you. I know you wanna put some feta yes. cheese. Yes. Then we'll throw some more on the top after. Oh, it smells good. Now, if you have the ability to put fresh onions on top of this when it comes out, that'd be nice. That'd be good. We like to cook ours, but there we go. That's it. So pop it in the oven, 375, and let's see what happens. All right. So what we're going for is a loaf of bread about like that. Now, you mm -hmm. could do one big one, but I like these little compact, dense yeah. loaves. They're delicious. They're absolutely wonderful. You cut you a couple pieces off, you have yeah. it along with it. Delish. You put butter on it or not, or cheese mm -hmm. or whatever you want. It's absolutely wonderful. So this is what we're going for. That's right. And this is set another half hour. See how it's up again? Yep. Now this is where we're going to divide it into two. Now if you're looking in our kitchen and you say, there are dishes in the sink, or that pan has got stuff on it. We are not a show that is on a set, this is our kitchen. If you see material or old baked in stuff on our pans, that's just the reality that's of a right. kitchen. That's an old pan. I bet you that pan right there is probably 25 years old. Oh, at least 25. Maybe older than that. Yeah. So that's it, you let's, set them down. Let's put three little cuts in that. You got a right. little, give me a little. You have a paring knife? Yeah. And this will actually, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit, but it raises in the oven a little bit too. So I'm just gonna do one down the middle. Hot cross buns. Yeah. And this doesn't destroy this bread like you do in some when you cut it. And this is a really dense, heavy bread. Mm. All right. It is delicious. Now, again, if you look at that bread up close, you can see rosemary, you can see basil, you can see pepper chunks. It's flavored and it's wonderful. We do this quite often with our breads. You can do that. There are uh -huh. no rules against it. That's right. And this is actually going to grow in the oven a little more. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on 375 gotcha. for 40 minutes. All right. All right. So I think a little more cheese. Yes, yum. Would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. A little more cheese. Some sun-dried tomato. A little more seasoning, a little more Greek seasoning. Delish. Yum, 
Factor 10,000. Smell that? Mm -hmm. Very excited. Does it smell greeky? Oh yes. So what I'm gonna do is cut us out. Slice of pie. It's like a slice of pie. <laughs> oh my. It's like a piece of pie. So what are we gonna do here? <laughs> Tzatziki sauce? Yummy. So what do you call this? I'm gonna call this a you know what? Let's just go plain and simple. It's a gyro casserole. Okay. Z zucchini gyro casserole. Wow. So, you first. Oh my goodness. That looks delicious. Now, it's not going to taste a minute ago. And let me tell you something. This right here, mm. the zucchini really adds something to it. It's almost... And you could, you could use cucumber in here too now wow. to get that cucumber taste. But we have plenty of zucchini, plenty of squash. You take this and you have, you know, you have the Greek taste of the gyro. Oh, that's delicious. Meat. And the noodle, to me, instead of the flatbread. I like it. Is really, really nice. And it's healthy. You got all that olive oil in it. That it tastes so good with that meat. Mm. I know. That is delicious. Oh. This is really good. I need some more of this. That's one of my favorite things we've That's made good. in the last week. Yes. It was, you know, it was work to put it together, but it was worth it because it's pretty and it's delicious. And look what you end up with. That is, I love it. That's a full meal. You got mm -hmm. your meat, you have your pasta, you have your vegetable, you got some olive oil, you got your tzatziki sauce yes. and cheese. And it is kind of a wonderful thing. It's kind of delish. <laughs> so we're going to call this a gyro casserole with zucchini or cucumber. Yeah. Put that in as That's well. That's true. And again, no waste, right. no waste. We used about three of those and we can make another one tomorrow. That's right. The bread is light, mm -hmm. it's compact, it's tasty. Got some seasoning in there. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. You dip that in like soup, oh I like that, that's good. Yeah, that'd be perfect for dip it. dipping in your mom's mm -hmm. lemon chicken oh, yeah. Greek soup. This is unique. It's a recipe we threw together mm -hmm. with something in mind. Yeah. And you come up with this wonderful, unique recipe. Look around your kitchen. Look and see what you've got. And think, okay, if this goes with that, why wouldn't this go with that? So we made this beautiful lasagna-ish dish. Right. That I don't think has ever been done before. I could be wrong. <laughs> I like it. But it's delicious. If you like gyros, if folks like gyros in your home. Right. There it is, here it is. We're gonna turn the cameras off and eat every bit of that. But first, Mrs. Farmer, if you'd want a recipe like this, where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Gazillions of recipes, mm -hmm, how-tos, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And we have a Facebook page, and we want folks out there to be on our Facebook page. Extremely hard to get on there because there are how many steps? One. What do you do? You hit like. That's it. It's hard. So be our Facebook friend, come visit with us there. And Mrs. Farmer, I hate to say this, but our half hour is up. So we have to basically shut the cameras down and eat. That's right. But we will see you next week because it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. I'm, I'm excited about this. this to order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.